I used to live above a haunted store in Columbus, Ohio. After college, I opened a vintage clothing store in an old apartment house on a corner of High Street across from Ohio State University. Unicorn Vintage Clothing read the black and white sign painted with a leaping unicorn in a circle of stars. Unicorns were big the year we opened, so was Vintage Clothing. We soon expanded into the apartment next door, unboarding the doors between the two sections and building dressing rooms and display racks. Conveniently, the new section had an upstairs apartment which I claimed for my home. At night, the store was an eerie place, with its mannequins that never failed to startle me, with its racks of clothes where madmen or ghosts could lurk. Although the shop was quaint and pleasant during the day, after dark I always hurried upstairs as quickly as I could and locked the door behind me. The west side of the store, where I lived, was sunny and comfortable. But when I stepped into the east side, there was a chill about the air. A touch of the damp, like a room that rarely sees the sun. My apartment had a few idiosyncrasies. Many nights I would wake to footsteps creaking slowly up and down the hall or plodding up the stairs. The first time it happened, I called the police. When they arrived, the doors and windows were all locked, just as I had left them. The officers exchanged glances as I explained. The next day I lay in bed, clutching the covers, telling myself it was only my neighbors three apartments away. I also found things missing, crazy things, like a pair of wool tights, books, a kitchen knife, and I had the only key. Customers used to joke about bringing in the dead owners with the clothing. I smiled, but I had seen what looked like an attempt by a dead owner to reclaim her earthly garment. A customer had tried on an Edwardian blouse. When she came out of the dressing room to show it to us, her face became blank, her eyes unfocused. I've been here before, she said. We're at a lake, on a picnic, and went on to describe an old-fashioned outing. She went back into the dressing room and came out wondering vaguely about her odd experience. She bought the blouse, but I wasn't sure if I should sell it to her. My liability insurance didn't cover repossession. Ellen, the unicorn's manager, was a tall redhead with a soulful, high-cheekboned face beneath a cloud of pre-Raphaelite hair. With her model's figure, she could wear clothing from all periods. Often she looked like she had just stepped out of an antique photo. Ellen herself was haunted. She had parents who saw ghosts. She had a brother with a crystal ball and a house that positively seethed with spirits. And recently, poltergeist activity had begun to break out at her own house where she had two rebellious adolescent daughters. She took supernatural phenomena for granted, so when she told me that she had been pushed down the stairs by the old man, I gulped, but I listened. You just tripped on your skirt or something. Yeah, that's it, I suggested nervously. I felt a definite shove on my back, she insisted, almost like, hey, notice me. And it really didn't seem to bother her. It bothered me, though, having to look nervously over my shoulder as I clung to the handrail. It bothered me that things disappeared from my locked apartment. It bothered me as I realized that no trick of acoustics could transmit footsteps from three apartments away. I began to get a mental picture of the old man, a stooped, gray-haired, rather untidy person in a cardigan, his shirt sleeves rolled up, shuffling about in his slippers. On the stairs, 
Ellen repeatedly felt a hand nudge her back. She began to talk to the old man, teasing the spirit about his ratty greenish-brown cardigan. One day, I mentioned something very tentatively about the upstairs to our maintenance man. He looked thoughtful. Hmm, he said. I'm interested in this kind of thing. Let me do a little research. A few days later, he came by again. I asked Carl, our landlord, and I'll tell you what he told me. You know, this used to be an optometrist's office. Well, the old doctor, he lived upstairs, in the side opposite your apartment. And, he paused triumphantly, he died in that back room. It explained a lot. In fact, it was a classic ghostly phenomena. The dead person who doesn't know he's dead. As Ellen said, he just wanted some attention. I should have felt sorry for the pathetic old man, with nothing better to do than wander around my halls and push people down the stairs. But he still frightened me. Or was there another, more malevolent ghost at the Unicorn? One day, Alexis, who I had only just met, came to the store. On a whim, I asked her to go upstairs and get something out of the back room, the sewing room. When she came down, I nonchalantly asked if she had noticed anything about the room. She started to speak, but when I was distracted by a customer, she made some excuse and left quickly. I let it drop until I was researching this story, when she told me the whole story. Alexis felt a crawling in her stomach as she went up the stairs and was enveloped by the chill of the upper hall. At each step and all the way down the hall, she fought her fear, wanting only to run back downstairs. She forced herself to turn into a door of the back room. In the closet was a man, a tall man in black clothes with a gaunt face, black greasy hair and beard. He grinned at her, a devilish grin. Terrified and shaken, she rushed back downstairs, only to have me casually ask her if she'd noticed anything. I could have strangled you for sending me up there. I was totally afraid, like I'd come face to face with someone deranged. She told me that her mother considers herself psychic and that she herself is unusually sensitive to vibrations from anything old. Alexis has a theory that the sweat in old clothes contains pheromones that can be sensed by certain people and trigger a psychic reaction. Researchers have shown that the sweat of aggressive rats can provoke other rats to violence. Similar studies with similar results have been done with humans. It makes a certain amount of sense, said Alexis. People sweat when they're having an intense emotional experience. Why couldn't particles of these emotions in the pheromones be left to be picked up by people who are sensitive to them? She could be right. Customers had accused me of bringing in spooks with the clothes. Perhaps the man in black was one of them. Alexis isn't sure. He could have been a real spirit. The old man, when younger, a pharmonic memory, or a hole in the fabric of time. Whatever he was, she doesn't want to experience anything like him again. As a result of her psychic uneasiness from the things hanging in her closets, she decided to give away her cherished collection of vintage fashions. These days, she still wears vintage styles, modern copies made from modern fabrics. And these days, Alexis feels much less haunted. I made a similar decision to sell the store. I moved away from the old man and the terrors in the night, away from the clothes and any former owners who happened to be hanging around. I moved into a nice, sun-filled Victorian house, which, if it was haunted, was haunted only by mice. Only then could I relax and realize just how much the atmosphere at the Unicorn had haunted me. I drive by my old store occasionally. It's been a drug crisis center, a swimwear store, and a number of other things. No tenant ever stays very long. And I wonder, 
Does the old man know he's dead yet? Hi everyone, Mr. Sean here. Thank you so much for listening. The story you just heard comes from Haunted Ohio, Ghostly Tales from the Buckeye State by Chris Woodyard. Originally published in 1991, there are five volumes total and they are some of my favorite books from my childhood. Each book contains a multitude of ghostly encounter stories from people from all over the Buckeye State. However, the one just read to you was one of Woodyard's own tales before she became a paranormal investigator. I myself had the pleasure of meeting Woodyard back in 1994 when she did a book signing for the release of Haunted Ohio 3 at the Westerville Library. While you can find these books at a multitude of bookstores if you live in the state of Ohio, you can also find them online. I do so hope you'll give these a look, as, again, they're some of my favorites, and now that I've shared a story with you, I hope it will become one of yours as well. Please check out Chris Woodyard's work and support the author in any way you can. Likewise, if you enjoy this channel and would like to support me, please consider joining my Patreon or becoming a channel member or checking the links and perhaps buying a miniature. Until next time, everyone, may all your paranormal encounters be chilling yet safe. And please, alpha great day and an even beta tomorrow. Bye bye